we're talking about you know, opportunities to create wealth uh, in a new environment. This is not new. There's been talk about these things for a long time. And in fact, every time you come here, I like to talk um, uh, about technologies and innovation with you because I know it's a topic that in uh, it seems that maybe Australia has been a bit slow in this field and maybe at the policy field. Um, what's what's your opinion on that? I know as Mayor of Adelaide, Lord Mayor of Adelaide, you are at the forefront of bringing new technologies in. For example, we're using here now the the very high speed uh, internet. Uh, that you were championing, and that's made a big difference to the quality of our, our signal. South Australia has also been at the forefront of renewables, but there's been political debate about that. Where, where do you see that going? It's fairly well documented that globally, much of the innovation at a technological, entrepreneurial, investment, but even government policy level, is actually coming from the state and provincial level globally, right across the world. And I'm sure this would be the same in Italy. So what does that mean? South Australia is currently in excess of 50% renewable energy in our grid. The state has addressed the grid instability issues from previous years and in future years, looking at the modelling in terms of the cost, the cost of energy will come down because energy is a key import cost, not only for households, but of course for business. It's a key production cost, in fact, for business. So businesses always quite reasonably are going to want to see that cost come down. Their energy and their water costs can be high. The model says associated with energy costs and actually water costs to some degree is that the trajectory in the future is downwards. That's good. Now, with over 50% of the energy in the grid in South Australia coming from renewable sources, and by next year, by the end of next year, it's actually projected to grow to towards 70%. And then by 2030, it's projected to grow further to something in the vicinity of 90%. It actually puts us from clearly a leading position to a world-leading position. But energy is only one part of the equation. Because when we look at sustainability, we often default to talking about energy. But there are many parts to sustainability. And I think the very unfortunate bushfires have really raised the level of discussion in the community about sustainability and climate change, land clearing, and all of these things, which to some degree are, in fact, interrelated. So my view is, um, in absence of strong, clear federal government policy, that South Australia and most importantly the business community within South Australia can proceed and can proceed to lead um, because if we look at global demand, what we do know with, with 100% surety is demand for renewable sources of energy, demand for lower costs of energy but cleaner energy will only grow. We know that demand for water because of global population growth and other factors and climate change or changing climate will only grow. We know that trying to come up with solutions to solve waste issues globally, those issues will only grow, grow in terms of their need. And we also know that the technology around it will only continue to provide more solutions. So I think South Australia is well positioned to proceed with confidence in terms of its national leadership, which it has now, to actually set a goal towards international leadership, which it can get. Because we do have clever people. We've got very clever people. We've got universities who are teaching people in all of these endeavours. And it is, if we think it's a big topic today, it's only going to become a bigger topic tomorrow. And I do genuinely believe that South Australia and South Australian business is well positioned to lead.